In this video, I'll show you how to use a little programmable device called a microbit to create an emotion tracker. You can press one button to cycle through different emotions, like sad, okay, and happy, and a second button to log that emotion. You can carry the microbit with you to track your emotions throughout the day, and then view a graph showing how your emotions changed when you upload the data to your computer. If this is your first time using a microbit, make sure you check out the written instructions linked in the video description to help you get started. In the rest of this video, we're going to focus on how you write the program to create your own emotion tracker. To get started, create a new program in Microsoft MakeCode and make sure you have the blocks option selected because that's what we'll be using for this tutorial, although you can also program your microbit in JavaScript or Python. Again, if you aren't sure how to get to this point, make sure to check out the getting started instructions linked in the description of this video. For this program, we're going to need the data logging extension. You can add those blocks to your program by clicking the extensions button here, then clicking data logger, and you will now have a new option in the menu with data logging blocks that you can add to your program. The first thing we're going to do is create a variable that we are going to use as a numeric representation of the emotion. So go here to variables, click on that, click on make a variable, and you can call it whatever you want, but I am going to call it emotion and click OK. You will now have blocks for this variable available in the variables menu here. So I am going to drag out a set emotion to zero block and snap that into my on start block, which is code that just runs one time at the beginning of my program. We have this forever block that is going to contain code that loops forever, but we don't actually need that in this program. So I'm going to drag it over here to the trash and just have my on start block. Next, we are going to set our program up to do data logging. So I'm going to click on the data logger menu here drag out the set columns block. And again, I am going to give a name to this column. It doesn't have to be the same as the variable name, but in this case, I am just going to call it emotion because that's the variable variable I'm going to be logging. So this is going to set up data logging to log a number in a column called emotion. Finally, I am going to use the set timestamp block here which is going to set the units that it will display the timestamp, which is the elapsed time since the program started. And I'm going to start out with seconds because when you're just quickly testing the program, you might want to cycle through the buttons and log an emotion just every few seconds. But when you're actually carrying this around with you for a longer period of time, like all day or all week, then it might make sense to change that to minutes, hours, or days. But again, for purposes of testing the program, we're going to set that to seconds. Next, we are going to set up code to cycle through the different emotions and display a different face on the LED grid when we press button A. So I am going to go here to input and drag out a when or sorry, on button A pressed block. Although note that there are a bunch of other inputs you can use with the micro bit. So if you want to change your program, for example, to be activated, when somebody shakes the micro bit or claps or makes a loud sound, you could use those as inputs instead of pushing the button. You don't have to do what I'm going to do in this example, but I am going to drag out the on button A pressed block. And then inside this block, the code in here is only gonna execute when I press button A. It's not gonna happen when the program first starts. So when we press button A, we want to cycle through different emotions. And I'm going to use numbers one, two, and three to represent those emotions where one is sad, two is okay, and three is happy. And then when I keep pressing the button, I don't want that number to keep increasing. I don't want it to become four, five, six. I just want it to loop back around, start at zero again, which is going to be the blank state, no emotion, and then go one, two, three and go back to zero. So this value should only ever go zero, one, two, three when I keep pressing this button. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to drag out a change emotion by one block. So when I press button A, I'm going to change the value of the emotion variable by one or increase it by one. But again, if I just do that, if I keep pressing button A, then this number is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. I don't want that to happen. I want it to reset back to zero instead of counting up to four. So we are going to make that happen using an if else statement. So I'm going to go in here to logic and we see this if true else block, drag this out here. And what this does is it 
only does certain parts of the code if a certain condition is true. Else, if that condition is false, it's gonna do the next part of the code. And I can click this little plus button here to add more conditions. So it'll check if this first condition is true. If it is, it'll do the part of the code that's in here. Else, if this second condition is true, then it's gonna do this part of the code in here and so on. So ultimately, I'm gonna need four different sections of code here. So I'm gonna click that plus button one more time. Then I'm gonna go out back here into logic and drag out this comparison operator with the equals sign and snap it into my first condition for the if statement here. And the first thing I wanna do is check if my emotion variable equals one. That's gonna be my number that represents the sad state. So I'm going to go in here to variables, click and drag out my emotion block, snap that in there to take the place of that zero. And then I am going to click here to type one. So this if statement is checking, if emotion equals one, then do something. And what do I want it to do if the emotion equals one? Again, emotion is emotion value of one is what I'm using to represent a sad state. So to do that, I would like to show a frowny face on my LED screen. So if I go up here to basic, there are blocks that let you draw your own shape on the LEDs and blocks that let you use some predefined icons. So I'm gonna drag out this show icon block, click on the little down arrow, and I am going to click the frowny face. So now when I run my code and press button A to increase emotion by one, emotion started out at zero, it's gonna to increase to one, and then this code is gonna say, okay, emotion equals one, let's show a frowny face. So now what happens if I push the button again and now emotion equals two because it was already one and I change it by one. So one plus one is two. The second time I push the button, emotion is going to be two and now I want it to show kind of a mediocre or okay face. So one little time saving tip, you don't have to drag out all of the blocks again. I can right click on the equals comparison operator block and select duplicate and that is going to duplicate that block and everything that was inside of it. So I can now just drag that in here to the condition for the second part of my if else statement. But this time I'm gonna click on that little box and type in a two. So now I'm gonna write the code that I want the micro bit to do when I have pressed the button the second time and emotion equals two. Now I would like to show a different face representing kind of an okay feeling and again, you can either use the show icon block and look at the drop down menu here for the different predefined faces, or you can draw your own, which is what I'm gonna do this time. So I'm gonna drag out the show LEDs block, make sure you snap it in the right place and draw my own kind of meh face. So it just has a flat line for the mouth instead of curving up like a smile or curving down like a frown. We are then going to repeat this a third time. So what happens if I push the button again and now emotion equals three. So again, I'm going to duplicate my equals comparison operator, snap it in here to my next else if condition. I'm going to change this to three. So I'm now checking if emotion equals three. And if emotion equals three, I want to show a happy face. So I'm going to use one of the predefined icons for a happy face. So there, that gets me through my first three button presses where emotion starts out as zero. Each time I press button A, emotion increases by one and I'm gonna show my three different emotions going from sad to okay to happy. But right now, if I press button A again, then emotion is going to be four. And again, remember, I don't want that to happen. I want emotion to cycle back around to zero and just loop through these emotions. So what I'm going to do to make that happen is down here in this last part of the if else statement, this is what's going to happen if none of these other conditions are true. So if emotion is not one, it's not two, and it's not three, it's something else, for example, four, then the code that is in here is going to happen. And if that happens, if emotion does equal four, I want to set it back to zero. That way, the next time I press button A, it's gonna increase by one and it will be one again and so on. And I also, when I do that, want to just clear the screen so it's blank. So now I can just repeatedly press button A and I'm gonna cycle through showing a blank screen 
and then these three emotions. And I can actually test that without even downloading the code to a physical micro bit in the little simulator over here by clicking the play button. And you'll see that when you click on the A button in the simulator, it's going to cycle through the three faces and then go back to a blank screen. And if I keep clicking, it just cycles through them again. Now, all of that is just cycling through the emotions that are currently displayed on the screen. It is not logging any data or saving the emotion to a file. To do that, we are going to use the second button. So I'm going to go up here to input, select the on button A, pressed block again, but I'm going to change the drop down menu to button B. And now we are going to have different code happen when I press button B. So I want to make it so it only logs data if the screen is currently displaying one of the emotions. So if it's showing one of the faces, I want to save the value of the emotion variable representing that emotion one, two, or three. But if the screen is blank, then I don't want button B to do anything. So I'm going to do that with an if statement in here inside the on button B pressed block and a little more logic. I want to know if something is not true. So I want to know if the emotion variable currently does not equal zero. So if it equals zero, again, I'm showing a blank screen. I don't want to do anything, but otherwise, if it's equal to one, two or three, then I want to save the data. So I'm going to snap a not block into my condition for my if statement there. Then I'm going to drag out this equals comparison operator my emotion variable and just leave this as a zero. So I am checking if emotion does not equal zero, then I'm going to do something. Now I'm going to go back to my data logger menu here and I'm going to select log data, snap that block in here. I need to type the name of the column or select it from a drop down menu since I already set up the emotion column earlier that is available in the menu here. And then I need to tell it the value I want to save. And I don't want to just save a zero. I want to save the value of my emotion variable. So I'm going to go back over to my menu here, drag out emotion and snap it in. So now every time I press the B button, if the emotion variable does not equal zero, it's going to save the value of the emotion variable in my data file. Now this will work, but I could add some more features here, maybe to make it a little easier for the user to see what's going on. For example, I could display a check mark icon after I have logged the data to indicate that, okay, you successfully saved a data point. But I probably don't want to just leave the check mark icon on the screen until I press the A button again. So I could do something like add a short pause or delay. Say I just want to show that check mark on screen for one second. And after that, I want to clear the screen. So it just goes back to the blank state. But remember that I want what's showing on my screen to correspond with the current value of the emotion variable. So I'm also going to set my emotion variable back to zero after I save the data. That way, the next time I press button A, it'll start over again with the sad face and emotion variable equal to one, cycling through those three. Again, it will work without these extra lines here. This just adds a little extra visual confirmation for the user that the data has been saved and then resets back to emotion equals zero with a blank screen. Finally, one more feature you could add that isn't really required is something to delete the data. So for example, I could do that if I press both buttons at once, although you could use another input like shaking the micro bit. So changing the drop down menu here to A plus B. So if I pr press both buttons at once and go in here to my data menu, I can then select delete log and there are drop down options for fast or full here. You can read a little bit more about the difference between those in the micro bit documentation, but I'm just going to select fast. Note that it does also delete the data every time you download a new program to your micro bit. So if you connect to your computer and redownload the program, it's going to delete the old data anyway, and you'll start over with a new data file. But if you mess up or accidentally enter something and want to be able to start over, this is another way to do that. You can now connect your micro bit to your computer with the USB cable and click the download button to send the program to your micro bit. After the download is completed, 
Try experimenting with the buttons on your micro bit to cycle through the emotions and log data. I am just going to demonstrate that on the simulated version of the micro bit here. So I'm going to press the play button, cycle through to select an emotion, and then click the B button to log that emotion. It's going to show a check mark to indicate that the emotion has been logged and go back to a blank screen. Now, if I cycle through to a different emotion, click the B button again, again, it's going to log that data and I can just carry the micro bit around with me and do this for as long as I want. If you want to do that, you can disconnect the micro bit from your computer and plug it into the battery pack so it doesn't need to remain tethered to the USB cord. And then when you're done at the end of the day, come back and plug your micro bit back into the computer so you can look at your data file and see a graph of how your emotions change throughout the day. To do that, again, you'll need to reconnect the micro bit to your computer with the USB cable, and then it works sort of like a USB flash drive where you can browse to it to see the files in your computer. So I am recording this on a Windows computer. It might look a little different on a Mac, but when you select the micro bit, you should see a My Data file, and you can double click on that to open it in a web browser to see your data. Once you do that, you should see a screen like this where you will see a table with your data which you can copy or download if you would like to open it in a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. But you can also click Visual Preview to see a graph of your data right here in your web browser. In this example data, it looks like the user was happy for a while and then felt sad about something, but felt better after a little bit. Again, I am doing this with a timestamp of seconds, but if you were actually going to carry this around with you all day, you might want to change the timestamp units to minutes or hours, log the data throughout the day, and then look at it on your computer at the end of the day, see how your emotions fluctuated, and think about the different events that occurred that might have impacted your feelings. There are many other ways you could change or improve this program. For example, expanding the emotion scale to record on a scale of one to five instead of one to three, or even adding multiple different variables that you can track with the data logging feature. If you try this project yourself, let us know how it goes in the comments. Remember that you can find a link to the written instructions in this video's description, and you can also find over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering on our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.